We mostly run these for subs. They're daisy chained on the signal as well as uh, networking. So I've got one network connection in it that is connected into this uh, little closed network. I could be doing this in the office and just uh, connect everything over the uh, network. All right, with the uh, little closed network, the uh, laptop has its own address. So the amplifiers have picked up like a DHCP addresses. So now the uh, software can see the amplifier. So let's add them. This looks good. There we go. We can sort of see what addresses they're using. All right, so we got the uh, layout sort of straightened out a little bit better to see, and also we can see what IP addresses they've taken on. So let's draw in the configuration. Okay, we have an R and S up here. We want to receive the setting, and then once we have to make any changes or something like that, we're going to do the S to send the settings to the amplifiers. All right, looks good. And we are online with the amplifiers now. All right, this software is provided by Harman. It's called Audio Architect, which uh, it uh, is extremely powerful. So I'm not going to get into how to use the software. It is very much in depth and this software is way, way more than what we need just to manage our two amplifiers. All right, let's take a look at one of the amps. All right, and this is where we can set all the uh, different things with it, the compressor, limiter. We can mute them remotely. Now, just like on the uh, QSC, uh, the PLD amplifiers, once we get these things set up for the speakers that we're using, we we don't really ever need to get back into this. A lot of time when this, when this stuff is set up ahead of time, this laptop never comes out. We don't really ever have to uh, manage the amplifiers. Right, let's take a look. 1.209, decode, all right. All right, that all looks good. All right, let's just see if there's any firmware update in this... Um, All right, so for these particular amplifiers, the current version is 1.2.09, and the only available version that's on here is 1.2.0.9. So that means that um, these amp the firmware on the amplifiers are okay. They are where Crown says they should be. All right, and if there was a new firmware version available, it would show up over here. Then all we would have to do is select update over here and then let's see if I can sc scroll down here a little bit. And then at the bottom here we would just do begin update. Now I've only had to do this once since I've had these amplifiers, which I guess is pretty good. I mean no, no new bells and whistles, which is fine with me. Just quickly take a look at some of the settings here. Now, these amplifiers are used only for sub duty. Uh, let's see, we're at no, no compression. Let's check the other channel just to make sure. Yeah, no compression. We don't want that. Let's take a look at the uh, limiters. All right, so with Crown, you can limit uh, the peak limiting by voltage, whereas the RMS limiting is done by wattage. So here I've got it set at 220 volts as a peak limit for about 30 milliseconds of time uh, before it's going to uh, compress the voltage. And as I said, with these being used as subs, the wavelengths are going to be much longer 
than if this was an amplifier used for mid and high frequencies. And with the wavelengths much longer, it takes a longer time for the wavelengths to develop. So what I'm doing here by uh, setting an attack time at 30 milliseconds, I still want a good impact to come through. So I need to wait for that wavelength to build, to come through before the amplifier limits the output. And on the RMS power, it says RMS power, but um, I've got the threshold set at 1,600 watts. And that is the continuous, not the RMS, but that is the continuous rating of all of the uh, dual 18s that we have. Now the RMS rating for all of these dual 18s is actually 3,200 watts. So what I'm doing here is I'm limiting the wattage based upon the continuous rating of the speaker, not the RMS rating. And really a good way to blow your speakers, make them overheat over time, is to set a limiter at the RMS rating and then you're going to run those speakers continuously at the RMS rating. That's a good way to burn the speakers out. Let's take a look at the other channel too, 30 milliseconds. All right, that looks good. Okay, it's all this air logging and stuff, which we don't need. All right, well, that's probably about it. And um, for all these things over here, we will leave these alone. All right, let's take a look at the uh, second amplifier here. I'm usually not into here very much, so I do like to go back through just to make sure things are set probably where they should be. This looks good. 1600 that looks good all right everything else here looks good all right so let's go I'm gonna select here to go offline there we go all right well that is about it um, so all we've done is upgrade the software that we use to manage the amplifiers but um, uh, the uh, upgrading the firmware of the amplifiers was apparently not needed. All right, sorry for the, uh, the the boringness of the video, but I guess it's good we didn't have to upgrade the firmware or anything. But at least we got the software upgraded. All right, thanks for watching.